Ken Spector with LivingEco.com and EcoRotzi, and we're here today with Paul Watson, who is the founder of an organization called Sea Shepherd. Hey, Paul, how are you? Oh, pretty good. Thank nice you. to meet you. Thank you. Nice to meet you. So, why isn't the United Nations, why are aren't governments funding your operations? Well, there's really a lack of economic and political motivation to, to save our oceans. Uh, for the most part, it's out of sight and it's out of mind, and that's a real problem. So how bad is the problem out there right now? I know you've saved so many whales and so many different species. What's going on right now? Our oceans are in very serious trouble, especially the decline and diminishment of, uh, of world fisheries. Uh, every single commercial fishery is in a state of collapse. And according to the UN, there will not be a fishing industry by 2048. And even before that, in about 20 years, will be the collapse of coral reef systems. So it's a very serious situation. And you know, if the fish die, the reefs die, the oceans die, then we die. Uh, we're intimately connected uh, for our survival with a healthy ocean. Right. So, so this isn't being policed. You are the pseudo-police. You are taking care of our waters, and you are taking care of our fish and our species. What, uh, who else is helping you out there? Nobody's helping us. I mean, I wish there were more organizations. I wish the governments would get involved. I mean, we have to take this vigilante approach. But at the same time, you know, we're doing it in a responsible manner. We've never injured anybody. We don't cross the line when it comes to breaking the law. I mean, we get called lots of names, but, you know, when they call me an eco-terrorist, I just said, look, you know, either arrest me or shut up. It's getting a little old, you know. So those who are allowing this to happen, aren't they criminals? Well, they are, but uh, certain criminals are protected by governments and corporations. Uh, you know, British uh, BP is a good example of that. I mean, what they did in the Gulf of Mexico is a total crime against humanity, and yet the government's kissing their ass. You know, how many whales alone do you think you saved last year? Uh, this uh, last season, about 800 whales. So. About 800 whales, and how do you know you saved 800 whales? We, the, the number they don't get in their quota because of our interference. Okay, so you saved 800 whales. What if you weren't around, Paul? What would be happening to our oceans right now? What would, what do you, what do you predict, or what do you think would be happening now, and what do you think would be happening in the future? Well, those 800 whales would have died. Uh, you know, we, we, we really measure our success in the number of sharks and whales and turtles and fish that we're able to save. When is your job going to be complete? When there are no more fish in the ocean? Well, you know, we're in business to put ourselves out of business, so that's what we've always said, but I don't see that happening right now. We're permanently uh, in the uh, Galapagos because that's our line in the sand. If we can't save the Galapagos, we're not going to save anything. And there, it's one step forward and two steps backwards. Extremely frustrating. But, you know, we do what we do because it's the right thing to do, the just thing to do, the only thing to do. We can't really dwell on the consequences. We, you know, we just have to apply ourselves to doing the best we can with the resources we have available to us. Right, but when are governments going to wake up? How many whales in the ocean will it take before they say, you know, we better do something? about this? Uh, governments always do things after the fact when it's too late, yeah. uh, you know, so I don't think we can expect much. I'm extremely disappointed with the Obama administration. I mean, they pretty much stabbed us in the back on almost everything. You know, the first uh, administration to betray the whales since Ronald Reagan, you know, so, uh, I don't, you know, and I voted for Obama, but, you know, it's just a, it's just a complete betrayal. I think after you get elected president, they take you in the back room and tell you who your real boss is. Yeah, yeah. Certainly isn't the American people. Yes. What can what can corporations do, what can individuals do, and what can governments do to help this problem? Well, I, I, governments will never do anything. Uh, corporations, I mean, uh, small companies and that are making a big difference and everything, coming up with alternatives. But really, the strength of any movement has to lie in the passion and initiative and imagination of individuals. And we're seeing more and more of that mm -hmm. happening. So you're a vegan, I'm a vegan as well. Jonathan behind the camera is a vegan. Is that, that's a good thing, obviously, for all of this. Well, I mean, you know, a, a vegan uh, driving a Hummer is contributing less to greenhouse gas emissions than a meat eater riding a bicycle. So, you know, that's the most inconvenient truth that Al Gore did not mention in the inconvenient truth is that animal husbandry uh, creates more global greenhouse gas emissions than, than uh, the automobile industry. Uh, so a lot of times we're just sort of in denial of these things. If you know, if, if we eat meat, then we uh, just pretend that that's not the problem. And if we do this, we pretend well the, the problem's elsewhere. It's always pointing our finger somewhere else. So I know cats now are eating more fish than seals are eating. How do you feel about cat ownership? Well, I don't own pets, and I've never owned pets because I don't think that humans are responsible enough to own pets. Aside from the fact that we, we keep predators as pets, which means that they're killing other animals, aside from that is that uh, our irresponsibility is resulting in millions of these animals being horribly killed every year uh, and, and horribly mistreated. And I just don't think we're responsible to be uh, to take on that kind of responsibility of owning a pet. Uh, so, you know, I, that's why I've never owned a pet. So what would you say you need the most of right now to make a monumental change, other, other than money? Uh, well, I think that uh, what we need is really more and more committed and dedicated and passionate individuals to intervene and, and, and fight for, the, for these uh, values.
Right, and as you said, 2048 may be the end of seafood. I heard the end of seafood. I didn't hear the end of all fish. I heard there would be jellyfish. That would be the uh, the collapse of worldwide fisheries by 2048. Right, right. And that, yeah, jellyfish will fill in, of course, and everything. But, you know, I, I was sort of used to joke that, you know, we'll get to the point where we'll be uh, eating jellyfish. And then I was at an event at the Vancouver Aquarium two years ago, and they have jellyfish uh, salad, you know. So, uh, you know, they're actually moving in that direction. What it is is a continual adaptation to diminishment. You know, that as this species disappears, we adapt to the next one. For instance, in the 1960s, nobody ate mussels. Now that's what they eat because we wiped out the abalone and the, and the oysters and everything or reduced and diminished them. You know, uh, the, you can in Seattle, they sell crab salad, which isn't crab. It's pollock with artificial dye and artificial smell, which, but it's labeled crab salads. You know, so people are adapting to diminishment. Probably the most blatant example is uh, the fact that in 1965, the very idea of buying water in plastic bottles like this and paying more for that water than the equivalent amount of gasoline would have been unthinkable. And yet everybody's adapted to that diminishment. In fact, water is now worth more than gasoline and uh, everybody just thinks, oh, well, that's the way it is. Well, that's, the, that's not the way it should be. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, so as far as an individual, what can the individuals do right now that are watching this interview? What can they do to help you? Well, I think that people really have to take a look at their relationship with nature, their relationship with the natural world, and understand that we're intimately connected to these other species, and the strength uh, lies in biodiversity. We must preserve those other species, the crew that runs Spaceship Earth. And uh, these are the species that most of us disrespect and think very little about, bacteria, worms, insects, fish, and that. They are what keeps this planet running. They keep us alive. And if they disappear, then we disappear. Is there a positive light to all of this, or is it just looking more and more grim by the day? Well, I don't look on the things as looking grim. I take a Plains Indian approach to these things. You do what you do because it's the best thing to do, the only thing to do, the responsible and just thing to do, and you don't dwell on the consequences. You know, you can't get depressed over that. And so. Well, I also want to congratulate you on the Charity Navigator Award that you got this past Monday. Uh, four st was it four stars? Yeah, four, four stars, I think so, yeah. Four or five stars, whatever it was. It was a perfect score. I don't really pay attention to that. I don't know that much about it. But Congratulately. It, it, your organization looks extremely credible, and the money is going to the right spots, and that's what I looked at the well, you know, actual page. We don't spend money on direct mail campaigns and putting people on street corners and things like that. It's a word-of-mouth organization. People join Sea Shepherd. They come to us because I don't believe in taking your donation and recycling it into raising more money. Right, you know, right. but the, what the p price we pay for that is we've grown very slowly, and you know we're not like big like Greenpeace or World Wildlife Fund. But I don't want to be that. Once you get that big, you become bureaucratic, and you really can't do anything because the bureau your lawyers and fundraisers are now calling the shots, and we never want to want that to happen. Well, thank you so much for your work, Paul. You're a true hero. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you. Bye bye. <laughs>